Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Pulp and Paper Industry Part 3. Before going into the details of today's lecture on paper making and cellulose and its derivatives production, we will have a recapitulation on what we have discussed in last couple of lecture on pulp and paper industry. We started with introduction and history of Indian paper industries and then uh, we realized that Indian paper industry is the first one to use the bamboo as raw material for uh, paper making and that is because bamboo is the one which is having the long fibers and then the quality of the paper produced from the bamboo fiber is very good compared to the other raw materials, right. So then uh, it has been realized that it is uh, important to do the bamboo cultivation up to the uh, demand of a paper uh, production or the paper demand that is there in the market which is not possible. So then other alternative raw materials has been investigated and then properly the industry has been established and then it has been found that if we uh, blend the bamboo raw material with other wood or uh, straw raw materials then the quality of the paper is still going to be the better one, right. Then we have seen the grouping of Indian paper industry which has been done based on the size of the units and then based on the sources of uh, material to produce the pulp and paper. So based on that one we have done the uh, grouping of Indian paper industries where we have seen that you know six different types of uh, units are possible or groups are possible. Then we understand that cellulosic raw materials you know very uh, important part in the pulp and paper industry. Even though we are taking the wood as raw material what we are doing in the pulp and paper industry we remove the lignin and other non-cellulosic components and then we try to have uh, as much cellulose as possible in the pulp and then from there we are making required uh, pulp and then uh, paper, right. But there should be some kind of requisites otherwise you know it is not possible to make a proper paper with of good quality with the proper economics with the you know profitable conditions. So for that you know feasibility of the raw materials especially to the pulp industry throughout the year then uh, you know quality of the paper that is being produced at what cost it is going to be produced all those things you know we have listed. Low cost production is required, high yield is required, all time availability of raw materials is required those kind of requisites we have seen. We have discussed different types of raw materials required for the pulp and paper industries like soft woods, different types of grass, uh, reeds and then straws etc. Those kind of different types of raw materials are used in pulp and paper industries those things we discussed. Then planning for growth of paper industry obviously we understand that uh, the supply demand gap is very high so then in order to uh, reduce that gap you know certain plannings are required. So one most important is that increasing the cultivation of bamboo as per the requirement or as per the demand of the paper. Also to see the other uh, possibilities like using eucalyptus and then reuse of the waste paper as the sources etc. Those kind of things are you know very essential for the growth of paper industry. Apart from that one having indigenous uh, equipment for the paper industry and then uh, continuous process uh, production of the uh, paper by the continuous process at the higher uh, throughput etc. are very essential to uh, look in so that to make sure that the paper industry growth is uh, sustaining. Then we have started discussing about pulp where pulp can be made by the mechanical, chemical and semi-chemical methods those things we discussed. Then we discussed uh, out of these chemical methods you know sulphate and sulphite pulp processes are there. So we have seen their uh, comparison then we have seen in detail uh, about the sulphate or uh, craft pulp process how taking the wood based raw material the pulp has been produced by using this uh, craft or sulphate process that is what we have seen, right. So here in the uh, craft process we uh, realize that there are uh, 5 important steps. First one is the digestion of wood based raw materials then modified process for the bagasse because the plant whatever that is available that is based on the wood base. Why because bamboo based digester why not designed because you know uh, bamboo is not available in much quantity whereas the different types of wood are possible. So that way though you do not get a very good quality paper but you can continue running the plant you know with different materials of a wood, right. So that is the reason you know design has been done based on the wood based raw materials but modifications can be done for the processing of a bagasse material. So where you know cleaning like you know uh, in this one dirt and uh, pit etc. would be there. So DP thing by wet grinding process etc. you can do and then remove those things we discussed. 
then bleaching of pulp is very much essential to remove the color and then other impurities kind of thing. So in general, you know, uh, chlorine dioxide were used, but because of using this one, dioxin kind of impurities were found in the liquor, which is not good. So then people started using hydrogen peroxide individually or combined with a NaOH in order to maintain the desired level of H2O2, uh, you know, you need to have the sodium silicates also those things also we have uh, seen, right. Then finishing of pulp operation that is whatever the pulp that you get after bleaching almost like uh, you have to make sure that how much water should it contain based on the application, based on the requirement of transport. Uh, these processes are required, they include like you know hydraulic press uh, at high pressures like 200-300 atmosphere followed by the vacuum uh, flash drying followed by the extrusion process etc is required. By this process you get water up to 60 percent, by this process you reduce the water content in the pulp by 40 percent and then by this one you can reduce it like you know solids you may be having up to 90 percent solids remaining only little bit of moisture or water would be there. Then last important point was recovery of chemicals that also we have discussed for the two options. So uh, by schematic if you by flowchart if you re-see the process whatever the chips are there those chips uh, you got by the logs of uh, you know wood you do the debarking and then do the debarking by tubbing and rubbing action then you pass it through a chipper where you reduce the log size to the 2 to 5 centimeters chips those uh, flat chips you take into the chip bin from here through a star wall you uh, pass it to the DA rater and then preheater section Right. So, the star wall is required for the metering of a solids, how many kgs per second or per hour required accordingly. If you want to transport, then the star wall is playing a very good role, right. And then in the preheater, deaerator, uh, required steam whatever is there that is coming from the uh, blow tank itself, right. So, after this process, whatever the uh, material uh, is there after DA rating and then preheating that is uh, passed through the lift line then to the continuous digester, right. So for this you have the tapped wall here for that purpose you know it is required, tapped wall in the sense it can send you know both the solids by one side, other side you know you can uh, send the recirculating liquor also. This recirculating liquor is sent at around uh, 12 to 15 atmosphere so that that uh, recirculating liquor can carry the solid chips to the top of the digestion column otherwise solids alone may not transport easily through the lift line. For that purpose this recirculating liquor, black liquor is provided. Within the continuous uh, digester you know you need to maintain different temperature at different uh, elevations and then accordingly uh, time of the digestion you have to fix it, okay. That comes with experience or you know maybe stabilized for the uh, well established plant. Right. So, this one to this one you also send the you know liquor to the digestion continuous digestion tank you send the white liquor as well as the uh, black liquor along with some chemicals like you know whatever uh, Na2SO4 or NaOH etc these things are required those things can also be mixed in the mix tank and then using the centrifugal pump you can send it to the continuous digester. After the process is over, so uh, whatever the digestion mixture is there that you have to take to the next level, but you cannot take it at high temperatures of 170-180 degree centigrade. So that temperature is reduced to approximately 60 to 65 degree centigrade at the bottom of a continuous digester by using the black liquor, right. Once the temperature is reduced to this one that will pass through strainer, it will go to the blow tank where in the blow tank uh, you know more heat is removed, heat is removed in the form of the steam and then that steam is uh, sent back to the aerator preheater purpose, okay. After reducing the temperature further low whatever the mixture is there that you pass through a screen where you know knots and undigested residues of uh, wood etc are there they would be separated out. Then whatever the uh, pulp mixture is there that you send to rotary filters where hot water is sprayed for the washing of the pulp purpose. So then whatever the liquor that you get uh, from this washing finally that you call it as a black liquor. That black liquor you have to do the chemical recovery because it contains 98 to 99 percent of uh, chemicals that have been 
uh, used for the digestion purpose. Actually from the uh, solid liquid point of view it will have 15 to 18 percent solids okay? and then out of the remaining liquid whatever there, in the remaining liquid 98 to 99 percent chemicals would be there. So, that liquids has to be processed so that to recover chemicals and then reuse otherwise plant cannot be economical. right? So, whereas the pulp whatever is there approximately 30 percent is taken to the bleach plant so that you know from the pulp other products can be produced whereas approximately 70 percent is taken to the drying section then to paper mill for making the paper. Basically almost like three-fourth of the pulp that is being produced is used for the paper making whereas the remaining is used for the other cellulosic materials production because uh, pulp is nothing but the commercial cellulose. Now chemical recovery from sulphate pulp digestion liquor also we have studied. So, where it is uh, essential to recover the chemicals from the liquor, actually black liquor it is having only 15 to 18 percent of the solids. Those solids are nothing but the organic components having C, H, O, etc. kind of these kind of uh, structures, but that will also be containing you know uh, liquids. Let us say whatever the liquid which is 75 to 82 percent roughly it is there. In that liquids uh, you know 98 to 99 percent uh, inorganic chemicals which are used for the uh, digestion purpose and other purpose of pulp making and they would be there. So, they should be recovered otherwise you know you cannot discard such uh, water with such high quantity of chemicals. So, from the pollution point of view as well as the from the economics point of view because if you recover these chemicals you can reuse it within the plant. So, for that purpose chemical recovery is very essential in the pulp and paper industry. In fact, uh, success of uh, pulp and paper industry depends on how effectively are you recovering chemicals. Sulphate process is dominating over sulphite process because of such reasons only. Because in the sulphite process different types of liquors are produced and then their chemical recovery is very much tough compared to uh, what is the process here. Okay? So, that black liquor containing 15 to 18 percent of carbonaceous material and then remaining liquid that, that would be sent to a multi effective operator 6, 5 to 6 are required sometimes more also required depending on the size of the plant. Okay? Right? So, here we have shown only one but multiple are possible. So, when you take this liquor into the multiple effective operator you have to supply energy so that to evaporate the water from the liquor. Right? For that purpose steam you supply and then the steam you send counter current to the liquor. Right? So, once this uh, multi effective operation process is done whatever the uh, liquor that you get in that liquor you will be having uh, solids concentration increase to 48 to 54 percent that is quite high from 15 to 18 percent solids. Now, water is removed so much that 48 to 54 percent solids are there. That would be further you know heated in a rotary dryer using the hot flue gas coming from the smelter process. So, that you know the solids concentration can further increase to beyond 60 percent. Why to increase this solids concentration? Why not you take this black liquor directly in this melting process? If you take a liquor with only 15 to 20 percent of solids, a combustion may not take place. Even if the combustion taking place that may not sustain. For that reason, increasing solid concentration is required by removing the water. Right? Whatever the uh, gases coming out of this rotary drying system, they may also contain some amount of solids in general. So, for that purpose to recover those solids you know that is passed through a cotrill precipitator. Right? This precipitator now uh, you know it, it collects whatever the solids etc. at the bottom and then uh, steak gases is releases from the top. Right? So, then this liquor after increasing the solids concentration to 60 to 65 percent is mixed with chemicals make up chemicals like Na2SO4 and then sulphur. This Na2SO4 uh, is being used in the process that is the reason this process is known as the sulphate process. Right? So, then this uh, black liquor having 60 to 65 percent solids along with uh, make up chemicals fed to a smelting uh, chamber or smelter or smelting furnace where preheated air is supplied so that the combustion can take place, combustion of carbonaceous material takes place and then because of the combustion of carbonaceous uh, material you get uh, hot flue gases as well as the inorganic smelt you get. Hot flue gases would be sent back to the rotary dryer so that you know dr further drying of the liquor can take place. Whereas, the inorganic smelt that you get that you send it to the dissolved tank 
where it interacts with cold water so that to get green liquor. Now this green liquor you take to the clarifier. Now here in the clarifier whatever the solid sludge etc are there that you separate out. After separating out the solid sludge from the clarifier before discarding it as waste you wash it with the wash water right and then only solid sludge you separate out whereas the wash water is there diluted wash water is there that you feed back to the dissolved tank okay. Whatever the filtrate from the clarifier is there or clarified liquid is there that you do the causticizing in a causticizing uh, tank using the lime. After that you know what you get you have primarily carbonated mud and then white liquor only would be there in the mixture after causticizing right. So that you can separate by the clarifier again another clarifier here you use to separate out the white liquor and then that white liquor you can reuse to the digestion purpose digestion whatever you know continuous digestion of food chamber is there to that one you can reuse as shown in the previous slide. Okay. Whereas the carbonated mud whatever is there that would be passed through a rotary vacuum filter to remove uh, more uh, uh, liquor from it if at all it is having and then that liquor is fed back to the dissolved tank. Whereas the almost like uh, dry carbonated mud is there that is primarily having the lime related things so that would be passed through a lime kiln and then dry it using the fuel and then reburned lime whatever is there that you take to the lime slakers for the recausticizing purpose. Okay. This is the chemical recovery from sulphate uh, pulp digestion liquor whereas we have also discussed chemical recovery from neutral pulp digestion liquor. Here uh, most of the steps are uh, same actually whatever this neutral pulp digestion liquor is there that is coming from the neutral sulphite process not sulphate process. Okay. So, if you have a neutral sulphite process then chemical recovery if you wanted to do from its uh, liquor so this is the process. Mostly the process is similar like you know whatever we have seen for the recovery of chemicals from the liquor that is obtained from the craft process but only thing that there we have causticizing step now here rather causticizing you have the uh, sulphiting and carbonating towers. Before that whatever the steps are there they are quite similar. So, whatever the liquor that you get here also roughly 15 to 18 percent solid should be there and then uh, remaining uh, liquid whatever is there that liquid would be containing 98 to 99 percent chemical here also right. So, these chemicals has to be recovered both from the pollution concerns point of view as well as from the economics of the plant. You cannot afford to have the so much of chemicals losing every time right. So, for that purpose of recovery this uh, flow chart is here. Now, the starting point is you know here also multi effective operator is used. So, that to increase the solid concentration in the black liquor from 15 to 18 percent to 50 to 60 percent roughly or 45 to 55 percent that can be done by evaporation of the liquid that is present in the liquor and then that evaporation of uh, liquid can be done by heating and then heating is done by the steam. That steam and then liquor are you know uh, entering the multi effective operator in the counter current way right. After this multi effective operator process whatever liquor you get that would be having you know roughly 50 to 60 percent solids only 40 to 50 percent liquid should be there. So, now after improving the solids concentration in the black liquor by evaporating the water you know what you do you mix with the makeup chemicals like sulphur etc if required you know sodium sulphide etc may also be added and then that liquor would be sent to the uh, smelting furnace right. In the smelting furnace what happened carbonaceous material would be combusted right for that purpose preheated air is being supplied. When this uh, combustion takes place you get the flue gas as well as the inorganic smelt right. So, the flue gas what you do the flue gases having SO2 and then CO2 would be sent to a sulphiting tower where whatever the chemicals that are present in the black liquor liquid. So, you know mostly they will be converting into the sodium sulphide, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate these kind of chemicals. Of course, they will not be in pure conditions but still in the liquor condition. So, that you can collect as a cooking liquor and then take it to the digester if required. If the more purification is required then what you do 
whatever the flue gas is uh, with CO2 only because in the sulfiting tower you do the sulfidation so that to get the, the sulfites etc. So after that primarily flue gases would have CO2 only those things you take to the uh, carbonating tower where uh, carbonation takes place and then you get sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonates etc. So if required sodium carbonates make up chemicals may be added so that uh, you get a carbonated liquor storage. This liquor what you can do you can send back to sulfiting tower so that whatever the carbonates etc are there they will be forming sulfites like Na2SO3. Okay. Whereas the inorganic smelt whatever is there that is taken to a dissolver where cold water is used to dissolve the inorganic smelt then you get a green liquor that green liquor would be having the solids as well as uh, you know liquor right. So the waste solids you have to separate out by a clarifier whatever the solids that you get the waste uh, slurry you get that you further wash it with water and then wash water you may be reusing into the dissolver whereas the sludge you know almost like a little water or no water that would be taken as a waste. Whereas the clarified liquid from the liquor clarifier whatever is there that you take it to the green liquor storage which would be having Na2S, Na2CO3 etc. Since Na2S is there so that you send it back to the carbonating tower and then from there you get the uh, carbonated liquor storage that liquor again you uh, send back to the sulfiting tower so that Na2SO3 you get and then that liquor may be reused to the digester. Remember only this liquor is uh, reused in the digester for the sulfite process whereas these things you have to do separate processing if you otherwise you know you have to do the process continuously until there is no green liquor or almost all chemicals have come into the cooking liquor so that that cooking liquor you can use uh, or reuse into the digester of a neutral sulfite pulp process right. Then we have also discussed about uh, major engineering problems which include like choice of processes like whether should you go for the sulphate process or sulphide process. Obviously sulphate process is better compared to the sulphide process because of the environmental concerns and then more economics uh, or more funding required for the purification of the liquor. For that for those reasons sulphide process is not uh, preferred, sulphate process is preferred. But however recent developments have uh, made advancements in the sulphide process where now the uh, cleaning of the liquor is uh, efficient and then economic so sulphide process is also used on par with the sulphate process nowadays. Then use of soda process, small batch operation pulp produced by the soda process which is uh, effective but it produces the low yield and then low quality paper. Economics also not good because it is a batch process you cannot use for the continuous process. So use of soda process is almost not in use nowadays. Then pollution and waste disposal problems like how to dispose the water etc or the liquor etc those things will always be there with pulp and paper industry. So one should be very careful for by recovering the chemical that you know discharging can be done. Byproduct utilization also, lignin, resins, and then latex, etc., gums, etc., may be there in wood. So, they should be recovered and then properly processed so that the byproduct utilization may also support the economics of the overall plant. Right now, in this lecture, we will be uh, discussing more about paper products. Paper is defined as matted or felted sheets of fibers, these fibers are usually cellulosic. Right. So, how do you get papers? It is generally formed on a fine wire screen from a water suspension. Types of paper products, these are classified based on requirements or characteristics of paper. So, like you know wrapping paper, like something like back paper, grease proofing paper etc. are called the wrapping papers. Tissue papers, cigarette papers, carbon toilet, towel, napkin, papers, etc. all of them are known as the tissue papers. Book paper, coated or uncoated, lithograph, offset, textbook paper, etc. called as book papers. So sometimes some papers are coated with polythene lining, etc., glassy lining, etc. Some kind of coating is also done. So they are known as the book paper. Writing paper like bond weight, linen papers, then ground wood printing paper whatever the pulp that you get from the mechanical process they are used to make a paper for the catalog, newsprint, tablet, poster, wallpapers etc. All of them are known as the ground wood printing paper. 
paperboard like heavier less flexible laminated paper stock etc are known as the paperboard. Okay. Raw materials for the paper production fibrous and non fibrous raw materials are there. Actually pulp is used to make the uh, paper and then pulp is mostly cellulose then that cellulose is fibrous. So, then why are we calling it requirement of non fibrous raw material because some fillers sizing kind of thing and then uh, some additives would be there like you know to provide the strength or flexibility etc. So, some inorganics are being used which are non fibrous. So, that is the reason those things are uh, grouped as non fibrous raw materials. Under fibrous raw materials we have the paper pulp as just we discussed as well as in the previous couple of lectures we discussed a lot about pulp. Such pulp whether you get by the groundwood methods whether it is bleached or unbleached, whether you get it by the sulphite or sulphate process or semi chemical pulp. So, any pulp can be used for making papers right, but only thing that depending on the nature of the pulp your quality of the paper would be there right. So, choice depends on end uses and blending of various pulps is frequently required unavoidable. Blending is to impact proper specification to end products with maximum yield from pulping material yield as well as the specific requirements of the end products can be met by this blending. Okay. Second one is the reuse pulp, newspapers etc. are considered as a waste paper after some times right. Like that you know other office papers, academic uh, institution papers as well as the business paper, corporate papers also some papers may be there which may not be useful in future. So, such papers are considered as the waste paper and then considering the environmental concerns as well as the not having enough forest resources to get the uh, new raw material for the pulp making so that to make the paper from that pulp you know it is better to reuse such kind of waste paper. It is very essential in the today's context definitely. Okay. This source accounts for 4 to 6 percent of fibrous starting materials. In view of raw material sources increased attention should be given to collection and reuse of waste paper because not enough uh, forest resources are uh, remaining to make a uh, pulp as per our wish. So, we have to learn how to reuse the waste paper and then make a new paper from the waste paper. Miscellaneous cellulose pulp like straw, linen, cotton and rags etc. are also used and then there are some specialty pulp like inorganic fibers such as asbestos and glass papers are also available. Coming to the non fibrous raw materials apart from the pulp there are some kind of fillers and then sizing material etc. required. In addition to chemicals used in producing the pulp large variety of materials are used for fillers, sizing and coatings also right. They bring you know some kind of strength or flexibility or colorness or opacity these kind of different requirements may be there from the end product point of view. Accordingly the fillers, uh, sizing materials and coatings are you know changes. So, they are uh, both inorganic and then uh, organic type are there. Inorganic uh, non-fibrous raw materials like they include clay, talc, titanium dioxide, zinc sulphide, calcium carbonate, calcium sulphate, barium sulphate, slum etc. Most of them you know uh, impart color these are you know for imparting color they are you know some kind of pigments they are used as pigment to bring some kind of colors for the paper or special, special kind of appearance to the paper. Organic raw materials like rosin, glue, casein, waxes, glycerol, dye stuffs etc. are in general used. Coming to the methods of production of paper, paper making is to prepare a suitable fiber suspension in water which is fed to a paper machine where fibers are matted and dried that is what happens in the you know paper making. Actually pulp making is a tough process once the pulp is there you know if you have a efficient paper making machine so then work is less in the paper making. Okay. Or the plant size wise if you see you know more uh, involvement towards the pulp making is there whereas the paper making side only you know pressing machines are required. So, we are going to see those details from the flow chart anyway. Following steps involved in paper making preparation of fiber suspension is very important whatever the pulp that you have you know that is insoluble in water actually and then when the material 
uh, is insoluble in water and then but that water must be used so that to make paper, right. So, this pulp is mixed with water and then made a very dilute pulp mixture and then from there you make the wet paper and you do the drying kind of thing. But the pulp is not miscible with the water, so then proper mixing and then a agitation etc., high shearing kind of uh, action should be provided so that you know uniformity of a you know pulp and water mixture take place. Actually, in the pulp and water mixture 99 to 99.5 percent is water only, okay? less than 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 percent pulp is there, okay? cellulosic pulp is there. Okay? For that purpose preparation of fiber suspension is very essential. How good are you making, how uniform and then refined fiber suspension are you making, accordingly that good paper quality you are going to get. Once having the fiber suspension making paper or formation of paper from the fiber suspension is the second step. Within this second step we have forming a wet web, pressing the sheet, drying the sheets like uh, sub steps are there. So now we are going to see all of them in detail. Preparation of fiber suspension, pulps are a water slurry to half to 3 fourth percent of fiber content by mechanical disintegrators of various designs. Various designs are there, one of the designs usually consists of a rotating drums with a knife attachments or rotating stationary disc to produce viscous shearing, something look like this. So, we have a rotating drum to which metal blades etc. are being attached and then once the uh, mixture of pulp and then uh, water comes here, so rigorous mixing takes place because of this rotating drum and then this mixing whatever is there that will provide high uh, viscous shear which is very essential to make a uniform uh, fiber suspension, right. So once you make the uniform uh, fiber suspension, further refining can also be done by you know some kind of conical refiners are there, so that will be shown in the flow sheet. So, you use the conical refiners etc. to make it uh, more uh, refined uh, and uniformed fiber suspension. Such operations are called beating and refining. So, this is an example of a beater. Various designs are there, one design is shown here. Fillers are added to the slurry to increase brightness, bulk, flexibility, opacity, softness, weight of finished paper as per your requirement, as per your requirement, as per the requirement of the end paper, fillers has to be decided. It is not like that all of them are used in all papers, no. Based on the final product requirement you have to select. Then sizing is an important ingredient often added to the slurry to reduce water of other liquid penetration into certain paper products. This also brings you know strength to the paper, strength to the paper and then usually you know what you do? starch or polyethylene kind of uh, sizing components are used for this purpose. All of them are actually mixed with the suspension after making the refined uniform suspension. What you do? You mix uh, filter sizing and then uh, other agents like coloring agents etc. if required, coating agents etc. required, you mix with them. The coloring agents are also mixed into the slurry before processing. These are generally synthetic organic dye stuffs, whatever the coloring agents are there, but some inorganic uh, water insoluble pigments are also there. Now, see the flow chart is shown here. So, whatever the pulp is there from the stock that you take to the beater, to the beater you are supplying the makeup water as well as the white water, right. This white water you can take as per uh, requirement in the beater other remaining one you can take it as a bleed stream, right. So, this uh, beater as I mentioned here it is having rotating drum with knives or blades attached to it. So, that you know when the mixture of pulp and water comes rigorous mixing takes place because of the high shearing action. So, then whatever the uniform uh, fiber suspension pulp suspension is there that you take to the conical refiner. Here further refining of the suspension takes place if sometimes you know what happens though it looks like uniform but you know sometimes some fibers may be bigger one and others may be smaller one. So, that you know sizing uh, refinement would be done in conical refiner and then after that whatever the pulp you get uh, you know that is uh, refined the uniform pulp which will be having 99.5 percent water. To this pulp you can add here the fillers then sizing components, then uh, 
if at all if you wanted to do coating some kind of coating all of them may be added. The sizing components etc sometimes they may be added after making the wet paper right. So, it can be added here also. So, this pulp with 99.5 percent water passes through a endless belt right. So, where by the gravity water is being separated sometimes suction also applied to remove the water. So, whatever the water that you are removing here by applying a slight uh, pressure by the pressure rolls as well as by the suction rolls and then as by the gravity whatever the water you remove from the suspension here. So, that water we call is white water and that is being recirculated to the beater. Okay? So, here this process uh, is known as the wave forming process and then by the end of this process water content decreases to 80 to 82 percent uh, from 99.5 percent. After this step it will be passed through a, a mild pressure roll where you know slight pressure may be applied and which we call the uh, pressing stage. So, in this pressing stage there is a possibility of a watermark rolls requirement if you are making bond paper or watermarking on the paper. So, that should be done at this stage. Okay? So, this stage is known as the pressing some slight drying also done by drying blanket by the completion of the pressing stage water content decreases to 60 to 65 percent. After this the material whatever the wet paper actually after this process whatever you get you almost get like a wet paper. That wet paper pass through series of steam heated drying rolls where drying takes place and then by the completion of the drying process water content decreases to 5 to 6 percent. So, that means almost by the end of drying you have the complete paper, but there may be some kind of non-uniformity or you may be requiring to bring more smoothness to the paper. So, then you can do this calendria rolls may be used in which smooth smoothness of the paper may be brought in by passing these rolls. After this whatever the paper is there that you can do the winding and then get the finished paper. Okay. So, finished paper also water content is 5 to 6 percent. Actually, whatever the operation moisture range water percentage is shown here. So, in the web forming uh, operation 90 to 80, 82 percent water reduced and the water content reduced from 90 to 80, 82 percent. In the pressing operation water content or uh, moisture content reduced to from 80 to 60 percent. In drying operation it is further reduced to 5 to 6 percent from 60 to 65 percent. In the finishing there is no water reduction almost, but only only smoothing is done. So, whatever this process from uh, here uh, this pressing etc all this thing is there. So, that we call is four drainer machine operation. So, this is very essential part of a equipment. If you have this equipment continuously working and then it can produce a higher ton of paper then you know you can depend on the pulp from the other source and then uh, make the paper using this single machine. Of course, there is a requirement of a beater and then there is a requirement of conical refiner as well. So, that to make the fiber suspension more and more uniform and refined. Okay? Second step of the uh, paper formation as we have already seen in the flowchart is the formation of paper. It includes three important steps, random arrangement of fibers into a wet web, then removal of free water from wet web by wet pressing and compaction of the sheets, progressive removal of additional water by heated rolls. So, four drainer process was developed to accomplish all three steps whatever required are shown here and extremely complex machine used in the process. The process looks simple, but the machine is very complicated because you know paper thickness is very small. So, how much gap should be there between the drums? Those calculations are also very sensitive. Modification of this machine produce laminated uh, paperboard stock and fine tissues. Capacity of single machine is in general 400 to 500 tons of paper per day. Under the forming of a uh, wet web, Wet sheet is formed by running 99.5 percent water fiber slurry evenly onto a moving endless belt of wire cloth running at a speed of 50 uh, meters per minute for pine paper and then it can uh, go to the higher speeds like you know 500 meters per minute for a news print as well whatever that uh, endless belt is there. Okay? Such high speeds it can run and then it can run as low as 50 uh, meters per minute. 
water drains by gravity, a part is uh, removed by the pressure rule and then by suction rule. And then further to make connectivity of the fiber what you do, whatever the screen is there that is uh, sidewise shaking of the screen is done. Water collected in this section of machine is known as the white water. Remember all these three steps whatever we are discussing about the forming of a wet web and then drying of the paper and then finishing of the paper etc. all that done by the one single machine, four drainer machine. This white water is reused to obtain maximum recovery of fiber to conserve water and additives and to prevent stream pollution. Pressing the wet sheet. Wet paper sheet containing about 80 percent water is fed via felt roll to the press section. In this section water is uh, removed by mild pressure to reduce content to 60 to 65 percent water. Then bond or watermark if needed is formed on the sheet during the pressing as we have already discussed in the flowchart. Final step is the drying the sheet. Sheet from the press section has insufficient strength actually though the paper is ready but it is not having insufficient strength to carry its own weight. So, it is required to do further drying. For that purpose it is passed through smoothing rolls then a series of steam heated metal cylinders. In these cylinders heat and moisture are transferred to a felting or canvas belt running on top of the paper. Paper board is directly dried without a felt in general. If you are making uh, paper board, so then this felting or drying by felt is not required. As the sheet leaves the last drying roll, uh, it will be having 5 to 6 percent water. It is passed through a final series of pressure or calendaring rolls to produce a smooth well finished paper. It is winded on a large rolls and transferred to the finishing department where it may be cut, coated and packaged. In designing the roll speed in the uh, dryer section, allowance must be made for 5 to 10 percent progressive stretching as the paper is pulled through the dryer because most of the drying whether it is uh, wet paper making section or pressure compaction section or uh, drying section, the material is passing between the rotating uh, drums or rolls. So, the how much allowance is to be given that is very essential and then up to 5 to percent is minimum required, sometimes up to 10 percent is also required. Tendency of paper to shrink on drying and coupled with machine tendency to stretch, two operations opposite are there. So, it creates a delicate force balance in the machine design. So, the design of this machine is very complicated. If we are having indigenous machine uh, which can run continuously to produce uh, hundreds of tons per day of the paper, so then paper industry would definitely be progressing better. Recent improvements in paper making increase in wet strength of paper products. Actually wet paper whatever is there it is not having sufficient strength. So, for that purpose sizing of paper with uh, starches like dihaldehyde starch and plastic such as polyethylenes are used. Okay? Newer types are also using resins also. This sizing is responsible for the increased use of paper products under wearing condition because it is producing the or it is making the process to produce of wearing conditions. So, then obviously use of such paper is increasing. It is true particularly for uh, craft type paper boards only. Second one is modification in paper machine to improve properties of a paper. Research is constantly being done to improve tensile strength of paper. For this purpose a rubber belt before the pressing rules incorporated which can be varied in degree of elongation by changing to a less stressed conditions at the end of operation the fibers on the wet web can be compressed and intertwined to give vastly improved strength on the final paper. So, such kind of improvements are going on and then more and more research anyway obviously keep continuing. So, whatever discussed things are there they are basically fundamentally required the information at the UG level of the course. Economics of the paper industry can be affected by three important sources or three important factors. First one is the shortage of fibrous raw materials. Second one is high prices and shortages of chemicals. Third one is procurement of plant and equipment. Raw materials as we have already seen the lack of forest resources requires long range planning for bamboo harvesting because it is better and it is mostly used for paper making. So, but however alternatives like you know a use of bagas, 
eucalyptus and then reed grass also as raw materials is essential and most importantly as mentioned uh, previous lecture as well as now reuse of the waste paper because nowadays so much of paper is being used. So, at the same rate if you are uh, producing paper uh, by cutting the plants, trees, etc., you know uh, we are going to have the disastrous uh, situation especially environmentally. So, we have to reuse and then make uh, approximately 60 percent of the paper demand by reusing the waste paper. So, we have to meet approximately 60 percent of today's uh, paper requirement by reusing the waste paper for the production of uh, such new papers. Chemicals also like you know uh, we do not have indigenous sulphur. So, shortages of sulphur and then other salt cake like Na2SO4 and chlorine you know there is a shortages right. So, also if you are let us say sulphur etc you are importing you convert that one into the Indian rupee. So, then corresponding high prices of chemicals you can realize right. So, these are very disadvantages because of that one we are not able to export much and much paper to the other countries. Procurement of plant and equipment, pulping equipment is relatively simple and it is being built in India. But uh, paper making machine, four train machine etc is quite elaborate and expensive as already discussed. So, if we can make such kind of machines ourselves and then run the process continuously then there would not be setback for the paper industry. Last part of the lecture is the cellulose because cellulose uh, whatever is there that is nothing but the uh, commercial pulp or the pulp is nothing but commercial cellulose ok. It is polysaccharide used in chemical industries in the form known as chemical cellulose for preparation of different types of fibers and plastics. It is obtained largely from wood pulp actually when we are discussing about uh, sugar and starch industry we understood that cellulose is a carbohydrate it is having only C, H and O and then H and O also in a such a ratio that the number of H atoms are there they are twice the number of O atoms like pertinent properties of cellulose empirical formula like C6H10O5 if 5 O's are there 10 H uh, atoms are there. So, it is a carbohydrate and then there are only C, H and O only no other elements are there. So, it is a carbohydrate but it is a polymerized so several units are there. Structural formula if you see this is the structural formula and then it is being repeated x time repeated. Total glucose linkage is 2 x plus 2 in general x for chemical cellulose is in general 250 to 1500. Density is 1.55 to 1.58 gram per cc in general. Solubility it is insoluble in water, dilute acid and alkali, ordinary organic solvents it is insoluble in all of them actually. Now, we discuss about preparation of chemical cellulose. Process choice is either sulphide process or sulphate process as we already discussed for the pulp making. Either of the process we can make, but there may be slight modification. What are those? We discuss now. Let us say in the sulphide process you know you need to go for the longer digestion times 9 to 10 hours etc. If you have sulphate process then you have to modify what kind of modification by subjecting the chips to prehydrolysis using acidic high temperature conditions. You have to use a acid and then high temperature conditions for the prehydrolysis. Once you do the prehydrolysis then you do you know digestion so then you get the better chemical cellulose ok. Principal requirement is pulp with uh, better bleachability and less ash, lignin and pentosans than paper grade pulp. In the paper pulp allowed a level of ash, lignin, pentosans etc are there compared to that one much less should be present in the case of a chemical cellulase. Chemical pulp is bleached with uh, chlorine as with paper pulp as we have discussed already. However, caustic Bleaching is done at 95 degree centigrade to increase the insoluble alpha cellulose content to 92 to 95 percent. This is major purification step since a very high alpha cellulose content is mandatory in chemical cellulose products because of that one this purification is very much essential. Bleaching with hypochlorite then uh, chlorine dioxide followed by drying is carried out as in the paper pulp operations more similar to that one. 
in fact whatever the paper pulp processes sulphate or sulphide processes are there uh, same processes you can use with little modification as mentioned. In the sulphide process you have to do digestion for little longer time whereas in the sulphate process you have to do pre hydrolysis using the acid and then high temperature conditions. End uses primarily chemical cellulose is used as uh, cellulose fibers and for cellulose derivatives different derivatives are there most of derivatives are either esters or ethers we are going to discuss them. Let us see first uh, cellulose fibers in which we start with rayon. Chemical cellulose can be prepared in the form of fibers called rayon. Principal involved is to solubilize the cellulose using cuprous ammonia or CH2NaOH. Carbon disulfide NaOH mixture or uh, cuprous ammonia you can take solubilize the cellulose. Okay. Then precipitate the cellulose in acid solutions while spinning a filament of uh, regenerated cellulose. Simple process first you have to take the chemical cellulose, solubilize it with uh, cuprous ammonia or a mixture of carbon disulfide and NaOH. Then whatever the material is there that you have to precipitate using uh, you know acid solutions and then whatever the uh, slurry that you get that you have to do the spinning into filament of regenerated cellulose that spinned regenerated cellulose whatever is there that is nothing but the rayon. Coming to the cellulose derivatives, all commercial derivatives of cellulose are compounds in which cellulose has reacted as either an alcohol giving rise to either to esters or ether linkages those things we see. Thus primarily cellulose derivatives are either cellulose esters or cellulose ethers. First we see cellulose esters they can be inorganic or they can be organic as well. In the inorganic category of cellulose esters nitrate or nitrocellulose are there where replacement of some of the hydroxyl groups of chemical cellulose taken place by this functional group O and O2 so that you get the nitrocellulose. In this nitrocellulose uh, low percentage of N is used for the uh, luckers that is if you have the low percentage of N in the nitrocellulose low in the sense less than 10 to 12 percent of N then that can be used for the lacquers. If it is in the intermediate level like 11.2 to 12.5 percent then this is used for the films particularly movie type films etc. If it is high 12.5 to 13.5 percent N in the nitrocellulose then it is used for this smokeless powder. Actually these percentages are about N content nitrogen content in the overall cellulose. Cellulose you know structure it is having you know 2x plus 2x is equal to 250 to 1500 times would be there. So now each molecule of the nitrocellulose is having one N. So like that in the, in the chain how many N molecules are there all that percentage if you count it should not be more than you know 12 to 13 percent. If it is up to 12 to 13 percent it is considered as high nitrogen cellulose. Okay. Coming to the organic cellulosic esters, acetate or cellulose estates are the mostly used one. These are soluble in cheap solvents such as acetone and methyl acetate has good film and fiber forming properties. We are not going into the production process of all these things because that is out of the scope of the. So, we are taking them and then we are trying to understand their end uses. These are produced by acetylation of cellulose with 50-50 mixture of acetic acid, acetic anhydride using sulfuric acid catalyst. Reaction conditions are room temperature and then reaction is taking place for 5 to 8 hours then you can get this uh, cellulose acetate. Cellulose acetate is then precipitated by dilution with water then centrifuged and dried. Reactions are simple steps are there so we are not going by flow chart. Solution in acetone and a spinning in moist warm air forms cellulose acetate fiber or acetate rayons. Okay. Acetate rayon forms 35 percent of rayon market that much market is there for the acetate rayon. 35 percent of rayon market that means very high. So, this particularly important from the uh, textile industry point of view but we are not going into the details of their manufacturing process. Other organic cellulosic esters are propionates, butyrates are the combinations of acetate and propionate or the combination of acetate and butyrate. These are prepared by mixture of corresponding acids or anhydrates as we have discussed in preparation of uh, cellulose acetates. They have better film forming properties, 
However, these are somewhat uh, more costly than the acetate alone. So, acetate rayon that is the reason it is having more market because it is making of uh, that uh, acetate rayons is commercially more uh, viable and then profitable. Next one is the cellulose ethers category or the other type of cellulose derivative is the ether type that is cellulose ethers. They can be two types soluble in organic solvents or soluble in inorganic uh, aqueous NaOH or water. Soluble in organic solvents we have ethyl cellulose prepared with ethyl chloride where the reaction is this one. Cellulose react with sodium hydroxide to give the sodium salt RONA or the ester uh, cellulosic ester sodium acetate. This RONA is nothing but the sodium ester of the cellulose. This will further react with the ethylene chloride to get ethyl cellulose which is soluble in organic solvents. Ethyl cellulose is used in plastic and then lacquer compositions because of its compatibility with the plasticizers and resins, strength, flexibility and then stability etc. Other type of uh, cellulose uh, ether is benzyl cellulose which is also soluble in organic solvents. Coming to the cellulose ethers which are soluble in water or aqueous NaOH are methyl cellulose prepared with a methyl chloride and its uses include as paper coating to impart grease proofing etc., as thickening agent in cosmetics, protective colloid in emulsions, as an adhesive and binder. Other one is the sodium carboxymethyl cellulose which is also soluble in inorganics like uh, NaOH solution or water. Reaction is that whatever the cellulose is there that reacts with NaOH to give RONA which further react with ClCH2, COO, Na to give sodium chloroacetate which is nothing but sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. Properties high viscosity in dilute solutions, good film forming, non-toxic, compatible with direct and acid dyes, compatible with acids directly as well as with the uh, acid dyes. Used as thickener in foods, emulsion stabilizers, adhesives, etc. Hydroxy ethyl cellulose the other one, the reaction is the cellulose react with the ethyl oxide to give the hydroxy ethyl cellulose used as textile finish by acid precipitation from alkaline solution. Other uses same as sodium carboxymethyl cellulose as we discussed in the previous slide. This is all about uh, the cellulose and then derivatives and then with this we complete the chapter on pulp and paper industries. The references for the today's lecture as well as the previous two lectures on pulp and paper industries are provided here. However, primarily most of the lecture notes is prepared from these two reference books. Thank you.